And I would like to call to order the August 19, 2008 meeting of the Glendale Redevelopment Agency. May we have the roll call, please? Agency members Draymond? Here. Quintero? Here. Weaver? Here. Stephan? Here. Chairman Najarian? Here. May we have your report? The agenda for the August 19, 2008 regular meeting of the Glendale Redevelopment Agency was posted on Thursday, August 14, 2008 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Thank you. Uh, we do have minutes. Is there a motion? So moved. Uh, if there are no corrections, additions, or substitutions, the minutes will be approved as submitted. Next item, please. Next item is oral communication. Discussions limited time is not part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. Members of the redevelopment agency may question or respond to a speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. Uh, the matter may be referred to staff through the executive director for an investigation and report. Thank you. I have a card from Shahan Kaprielian. Hi. My name is uh, Shahan Kaprielian. I've been... Um, I'm here to talk about our property on 220, well, not our property, the city's property on 220 South Grand. Um, I've been working with my father, Joe Caprelli, and many of you know, uh, since 1999. Um, we've been in the city of Glendale for 28 years now, and in 2005, as part of the redevelopment agency's plan to get the Americana up and running, we were moved across the street to 220 South Grand, which is a city-owned property. Um, we, our deal originally was for two years free of rent there, um, and at the end of the two years we were supposed to move out, which was going to be August 2007, about a year ago, and um, we didn't, we hadn't found anything up until 07, and now we've been feverishly looking for the last year um, to find a building. Um, we've been going back and forth with the, with the redevelopment agency, you guys, about finding a place. And we found, finally thought we'd found one on June 10th of, of, of this past year um, over on Riverdale. And we'd entered in, into an agreement with them. And it looks, just this past weekend, it looks like we fell out of an agreement with them. Now, I'm here um, to ask you guys for just more. All I'm asking for is more time. I know you guys think that we like the spot on 220 South Brand, but we, you know, it hasn't been good for business for us. Um, we're looking to get out ASAP as, as quickly as possible. We're doing everything in our power to find a place and move into it. We thought we'd done that with the Riverdale property. Um, we were ready to go. Our warehouse is packed up, and now we don't have anywhere to move all of our stuff to. So I'm just here asking for a little bit of leniency, you know, time is what I'm asking for, I guess. If I just had a little bit more time to find something, I don't want to be left on, on the street next week or the week after or anything like that. I, I assure you guys, I've stopped conduct, conducting my regular business, and all I'm doing is looking for a place to move my company to. I, I don't want to move out of Glendale. We've been in Glendale. We've lived in Glendale for 30 years. We've conducted business in Glendale for 28 years. And I, I don't want to move out of Glendale, but at this point, we're looking Burbank, Silver Lake, Los Angeles, Pasadena, just so I can get my business back to, you know, just so I can start running my business again. So, I guess that's that's all I'm here to say. Just so, just to ask for your leniency, I guess. Thank you, uh, Mr. Howard. This has been a series of uh, subject of a series of several post session items due to it uh, pending and litigation. ongoing litigation. Yes. We do you have any warnings for counsel at this point? Well, only not, not to discuss. Obviously, you can't make a decision here. Uh, it is a matter of pending litigation. If the counsel so chooses, we can put it back on the agenda for further discussions in closed session next week, if that's what you would like. Um, I mean agency. I'm sorry, agency. Thank you. I would uh, – the, the speaker did bring up a new, new fact that I was unaware of, and perhaps it would be best to discuss that in closed session. Uh, next or at, at the earliest uh, opportunity, it would have. It would have. The give, given the at the stage of the litigation, Mr. Chair, it would have to be next Tuesday. It's coming Tuesday. There's no objections to that. We'll at least have it on the agenda for closed session. It'll be done. We yeah. can't talk about it. Yeah, that's fine. Public, and, and just if I can, we're going to at least talk about it. If I can add, if, if anything new develops within the next week, I will Please you know, relay it to Mark or whoever I need to relay it to. Thank you. 
Mr. Starber. I think, Mr. Mayor, or Mr. Chair, not knowing uh, how much staff is aware of the current circumstance, making sure that we are aware of all the details of the current circumstance, because what we heard here today is a little different than what uh, I think we'd heard just last week. Uh, and secondly, uh, what it is they're specifically asking for in terms of timeline. If they're asking for something more than uh, we currently have a court order for, then I think we need to hear what that is. Not here, so, but before so next Tuesday. We'll be requesting a specific date proposal from them to at least communicate. Well, I think, I think you, at that meeting you'd want to know what it is they're asking for as opposed to just give us a little more time. That's rather nebulous. Leniency. Yeah, well, that's even more nebulous. Uh, <laughs> we'll I think it would be useful to have a specific proposal. We'll have staff contact uh, Mr. Caprilli and, uh, uh, and get some details. Make sure we have that. Thank you very much. Thank you. I do not have any other cards for oral communications and oral communications is closed. Let's move on to the next item. At 6 is a public hearing or on the business agenda. At 6 a is a public hearing director of development services regarding 34 space parking exception for Yoga to Life located at 333 and a half North Brand Boulevard. Thank you. And at 6 a 1 is a motion approving parking exception subject to comments and conditions from the agency. Mr. Lanzafim, the report is uh, pretty thorough, but if you could just touch on the highlights for us. Uh. Mr. Chairman, members of the agency, uh, Yoga to Life has uh, is looking to lease approximately 5,600 square feet on Brand Boulevard. They want to put in a multi-use business there that would include a juice bar and a yoga studio. Uh, when you have multi-use, you look at the most intense use and you apply that across the board. Uh, when you do that on this space, it requires 34 additional parking spaces beyond those that were credited from the prior use. Um, staff is recommending approval of this uh, because in practice we believe that, that the number would be closer to 10 to 15 spaces that they would need in that there's just a 2,000 square foot yoga studio. Uh, the the um, uh, applicant uh, has proposed to park, have his, his customers park in the 330 North Brand Building where the agency leases uh, spaces for the public to use uh, on, a, on a validation basis. That's what the prior <coughs> use was doing. On the weekends when that uh, would not be available, we think that the users of this building could be absorbed in the Orange Street Garage. Uh, we will be able to track both of those uses uh, through the validations that come through. So we are recommending approval. Uh, we would like to make it a two-year uh, um, approval uh, with the conditions that we've listed here, and then after that, revisit it and see if it's uh, everything's working smoothly. With that, staff is here. I believe the applicant is here as well yes. uh, for any questions. Thank you. Mr. Weaver. Okay. After two years, they're just doing bang-up business. Uh, then what happens? They would come back and, assuming that everything is working smoothly, they're able to get their customers uh, to park in 330. You could uh, uh, get another variance. They could apply for another variance. You could extend that for another two years, five years, ten years, indefinitely. It's just like the Glendale Career College and all the others that all want to use the Orange Street Garage, right? All in the same boat. We reassess everyone every, every so many years. We have not. No, I mean the others. If we go down the same route, because we talked about 100 and some for the college in the past, it would be the same kind of deal we reassess after so many years, right? In in some of the some of the exceptions that you've seen, uh, we did not have that provision. Uh, we did put it on this one because we're not sure exactly how it would work with people crossing the street, uh, so we included that as a condition here. You. I hope the next council is of the same mind if it's, if it's successful. Of the same brilliant mind, Mr. Weaver. Um, yes. Mr. Quintero. Well, I think this is a uh, good use for that uh, location. It happens to be next to the Massage Envy, which has done quite well <clears throat> in the past few uh, years. So the idea of not only is it a yoga, uh, yoga studio, but it's also going to be a juice bar, tea bar, bookstore, plus selling the yoga products. So I do think it's going to work well in that location. And actually, when you think of all the businesses in that stretch of brand, there's very little parking for anyone. 
These are buildings that were built in the 20s and maybe even before that. So uh, I, I think this is the right uh, use. We'll have the one facility for parking and then the Orange Street garage uh, uh, is right nearby. So. Mr. Kutera, on that note, I should add uh, their neighbor, uh, Massage Envy, I understand, is very supportive of the use. They like the mix, uh, as well as the downtown merchants uh, have, uh, have formally supported uh, and given you their recommendation for support. Mr. Chairman, I have one other thing. We are going to put parking gears on brand, which is going to change the dynamics, too. <coughs> Absolutely. I do have one card. Um, let me go. Let me open the public hearing and go to... Uh, the one speaker, Mr. Abraham Iwazian. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Chairperson, Council Members, and City Officials. I'm Abraham Iwazian, and um, I've been a resident of Ghana for 27 years, and I'm the president of Yoga to Life. Uh, I thank the RA for their recommendation and done. Just briefly, uh, let me tell you how the whole concept of Yoga to Life came about. Uh, after hurting my back, uh, I was bedridden almost for two years. And the only thing that really helped me to get by on my feet was yoga. So I dedicated the last four years of my life to finding the right formula to make yoga accessible and affordable to anybody who desires to have a pain-free and a stress-free life. A chairperson, uh, mayor and council members, I thank you for your positive approach towards, the, for, towards this project. Uh, I would like you to consider two important points that were not included in the GRA staff recommendation, but it was negative. <coughs> uh, first, the matter of two years of conditional usage. Uh, as we now agree with GRA staff that this center actually does not need a parking exemption. Because initially, my application was approximately 1,900 square feet of a yoga studio, which by city standards, it's 2,000 or less, does not require parking exemption. And the second business, 4,000 or so square footage, was a retail store, which basically was the same usage as before, so it didn't require any uh, exemptions. So, but because of some misunderstanding and confusion, we went to the option of asking for parking exemption. So, if the business is operated as separate business or as one business, its impact on the parking is not going to be any different. So, the application of operating as two separate businesses as one without exemption, the parking impact going to be the same. So I would plead the agency to remove that condition of two years as most of the other businesses have there. Because our lease is, as of now, it's six years. So in two years, um, I hope the same council stays. But if, if anything changes or the mood changes, whatever it is, and they come and tell us, uh, it's going to be uh, end of the business with a four-year another uh, obligation of, of a lease. Okay. Uh, so the, se oh, the second, which was uh, with the low fees. Oh, if you could conclude your remarks, Mr. Yes. Okay. Let me just go. Thank you. With the low fees, 52, uh, 51 dollars a month that we charge our clients, the business cannot afford to pay any parking fees. In the uh, in the future, if GRA decides to impose one affecting existing exemptions, so I would ask you to include a clause exempting this business from future fees. I believe that this center will benefit all of Glendale and surrounding communities, and I hope to create a healthy atmosphere for the younger generation to get rid of their stress and frustration in a drug-free manner. So, again, I thank you, and God bless you. Thank you very much. Any Mr. Yusefian. Um, you said there was a retail business there, and then there was 
what kind of other business was there? Retail. It was there were two retail businesses. Separate. There were, okay. It's on the same. It's in the same building. Yes. Three thirty. No, yes. Grant. Okay. But there were two separate businesses. Yes. Two, there were two separate businesses. What you're doing is taking over those two businesses. Yes. Okay. So as retail, uh, your contention is because one space was retail and you're keeping it retail because you're selling books? Yes, it's a new age bookstore selling books, herbs and, and that kind of Okay, so that's that's your retail part. Yes. The only other part is you're taking the other retail store and turning it into a yoga place. Yeah, it, not even the whole thing. It's the front is going to be a juice bar and a still retail space and only less than 1500 square feet is being used as a actual studio yoga studio okay and then why do you have the contention that there is no parking required at all because, because the yoga place there's a 1500 square feet change of use yes from retail to yes because the um, I went through the process of getting approval and most of the planners have approved and uh, I might have some of the copies, like eight to ten uh, planners looked at them and they approved two uh, yoga places, not only mine, another one on the cross the street that they, that they were lucky they didn't even get their approval to stop, so they already actually have their uh, use and occupancy certificate physical mailed to them. So as far as the city is concerned, I think the, the the understanding is anything that is 2,000 and less that are doing business on brand, they don't need parking exemption, so they can do anything. So you're you're contending that because your yoga section is only 1,500 square feet, you're not subject to it? Is that yes. what you? Yes, I believe that should be. I mean, it's not only my contention. Uh, I have the paper sign. I think so you have a copy okay. of that, and I can give you that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, can we get, in? maybe that's a, a critical issue here. Yes, let me just... Uh, I, I like, Lanzafame, I'd like to get some clarification from Mr. Lanzafame. Or Mr. Arwazian, why don't we let Mr. Lanzafame answer that point you raised. Mr. Chairman, members of the agency, um, I think it's, it's um, a matter of what the code requires and what is practically happening. Um, the code requires a certain a certain number of spaces and may not recognize that under 2,000 square feet when it's part of a multi-use. Uh, Emil Tatabosian, oh, he's over here, has been working on it and give you a little bit more detail. If you need. I just need to really not to get into the sure. history of, of the regulation, but uh, he is under 2,000 square feet. Despite being under 2,000 for the yoga, does he still need to come for the parking exception? Well, that's really what we're ready to discuss. Right, so, Chair, members of the agency, had the applicants used, uh, had that been limited to the front 2,000 square feet with a, a juice bar component, it would not have been an issue. However, after speaking with the applicant, we found out that the business is actually part of a, a larger uh, concept. It includes a retail component towards the back, which was previously a different uh, business. Business. Once you connect the two businesses, it becomes a single occupancy, and you take the, the zoning code requires to take the highest demanding, uh, highest parking demand, and apply to the whole center. As such, uh, 34 parking spaces are required versus just looking at a, a, a yoga use by itself. Okay. But the applicant, from staff's understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Ivazian, is proposing to use the entire 5,600 square feet, not just the front 2,000 square feet. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to accept your explanation. Thank you. I don't see our planning director objecting in the rear. Um, so he is here, and hopefully he's listening also. <coughs> Uh, therefore, let's... Uh, I'd like to ask a question from the planning director while he's here. Okay. There you go. You shouldn't have come to the redevelopment agency <laughs> meeting. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> your your uh, sessions are always interesting. Thank let you. me ask you this, Mr. Hagani. <laughs> uh, I think you heard the explanation. Basically, two businesses, one in front, one in the back. Yes. Originally, were two different occupants, two yes. different businesses. Now one person has come in and rented it. Yes. Now, as far as the parking is concerned, uh, 
whether there are two different entities or one entity, where do you see the practical differences? In terms of the operations of the yeah. two square business? Square footage-wise, it's the same square footage. Right. Uh, there were two retails before, and right now part of it is still going to be retail. It's just going to be a different change of name. And the front is also retail, except there's going to be only 1,500 square feet. That's going to be the yoga place, which falls within the 2,000 square feet model. So practically, I understand what the code says. You know, we set these artificial barriers for the code. But in practice, since this site was divided in half at one point or two-thirds or one, how does that... The, w the way that we look at uh, the the way that parking relates to the to the sites is that we actually look at the use itself as it occupies the square footage. So whether or not it's it's one business at that point is not that 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 as as important as the fact that that particular part of the site occupies a particular set type of use that then uh, for puts into place the kind of parking requirement attached to that use, and then the rest of the site would then have the kind of use associated with that, the other parking. So th what really happens is that what would be the parking required generated by the use? Does that answer your question? Right, and, and that makes sense to me. The only thing is, it says proposed 5,636 square feet, which is the f total site. Then it says juice bar slash yoga studio Retail requires 10 spaces per thousand square feet. Okay? Okay. So, which, which kicks it in into 57 spaces. Now, the whole juice bar, I am assuming the juice bar requires the 10 spaces? Uh, or is it, is it the yoga that requires? I, I, I think. I think the yoga requires the, the highest. It, it is the yoga, mm -hmm. but when you have the different uses occupying the same space, the code says the highest number. Right. Now, I think to answer your question is, practically speaking, we agree it, it's less than 2,000 square feet, so the code shouldn't demand any more parking. But technically, our code says when all of those uses are occupying the same space, then you need to provide the parking. That's why we're supportive of, of the exception, because we think in practice it's going retail to retail. There's something less than 2,000 square feet that is going to be a higher intensity, and we should be able to absorb that parking. But, but I think the code, in the technical aspects of the code require the parking exception. That's why we're here before you with a recommendation to approve. Okay. Got it. Okay. You yeah, I'm going to close the... Oh, okay. Another question for uh, Mr. Ghani. Mr. Ghani? Another question for you. Would, would you say this is kind of an unusual case? I mean, we don't see many combos like this, do we? Uh, it may be unusual in the context of the history of our, our downtown, but if you look at all of the active downtowns, you, to get these combined uses or these um, uses that have different com compartments to them is not unusual. As mm -hmm as many different jurisdictions try to come around to allow these more active uses within their downtown areas, they have to come up with ideas of combining them. In different What's the areas. general rule to give exceptions on these kind of cases? It's, it's, a, it's general practice, practice to actually take a look at the overall uh, uh, types of activities and then the, the specificity of the use itself and see if the strict application of the code requirement makes sense or if the use or the combination of uses by themselves create a different circumstance. So it's a staff call. That's right. Now, if, if he sells, somebody else comes in and wants to do something different, does this only run with this particular use? And if mm -hmm. Yes, yes. That's, that's, that's right. It is. It okay. Is. okay, I'm going to close the public hearing and see if there's any uh, final comments. Mr. Draymond? Yes, I support this exception. Um, um, I am glad my colleagues have asked the questions to elicit the, the technical reasons why, but the practicality is, the, the reality is that there is going to be no increased parking demand. That's the reality of it. So uh, I do support this. 
Um, and I, I don't support it with, in other words, uh, let me put that a different way. I support the exception. I would not be supportive of putting a time limit on it other than, other than uh, clarification that Mr. Weaver just asked and received, which was that this exception would run with this business alone so that if someday down the line it is no longer this business or some other use or uh, you have had to increase and move to a 20 times larger facility, I hope that that, that, that uh, kind of an exception would have to come back again to be looked at. Now, beyond that, um, um, I think the answer to the other question is what happens, Mr. Navazian, if you are have a booming success? I think the answer is we congratulate you, uh, not only for having a successful business, but for investing in our city and caring to invest in uh, mid-brand in particular. I think that is very important. We are trying to encourage business there. And um, so that's the other reason I support this exception. Um, I also am glad to see that Massage Envy has uh, supported your efforts there because they are not just a su successful business. They've become a, a uh, part of the engine that drives Mitbrand, not only through their successful business, but through their personal endeavors to uh, promote the business in Mitbrand. Um, so I will be uh, voting to support this. Mr. Chair, without a limit, uh, except that uh, this exception would run with this business as, uh, uh, entity uh, alone. Thank you. Mr. Weaver, then Mr. Quintero. Again, I want to ask staff, you put that condition in the two years review. Why then? I mean, I guess you want to see if this really is an exception, that it, it can handle, there's not going to be more parking demand. It, is it a protective measure by staff? Yeah, it is. Um, but I don't think that, again, we feel, practically speaking, that it's going to work just as the mayor has suggested, okay. uh, that there won't be. We wanted to put it in because it is something new to the to the area. Thank you. Mr. Lanzafame, I have a question for you. Um, in two years' time, uh, you meant during the two years' time, you said you will be monitoring the the way that the customers are using parking. Yes. You have that ability to either see where they're track them. They're parking either at 330 or at Orange Street or we will be able to track them better at 330 for the majority of the week. It'll be the weekend when people are are being redirected to Orange Street. They may not have a card to swipe, but when they use the 330 North brand, there's a validation that's given to them so they don't have to pay for the parking we get a report of those validations. I would have no objection to Mr. Draymond's proposed modification to Condition 1. Uh, however, I'd like, I'd like to hear back in two years and get your opinion as to whether the parking worked out the way uh, we were anticipating it, just as a, a test case, but not subject to uh, not adhering to, to renew or to uh, reinstitute the exception. Uh, Mr. Howard, yeah. and then is there something on this? Yeah, I, I was going to say, Mr. Chair, members of the agency, certainly another alternative is to delete this condition, and if there were problems created by the business, we could bring it back for revocation. We yeah. always have that option. And, and that option is available. I was going to ask, Mr. Chair. Okay, I'd be happy with that. Mr. Quintero. Yeah, I'm also I'm not comfortable with the uh, two years. You're okay with the revocation of number one, or the elimination of yeah. condition? Mr. I'm fine with that. As a matter of fact, that's what I was raising my hand to say, that eliminate the two years, and if in six months you find out that all of a sudden he's converted the whole thing into yoga and there is 5,000 people showing up, you can always revoke it. You always have that, Mr. Dream. Absolutely, because in point of fact, even if we had set the two-year limit and in six months we were hearing from the community that there was some horrible impact, we'd be looking at it anyway. Exactly. Mr. Chairman, the condition number two that has it specifically to this use um, is specific to the use that's described here. Right. So that if it was, if it did become 5,600 square feet of yoga studio, we certainly would be back for revocation, and you could use this condition as your support for that. Okay. Very good. Uh, Mr. Quintero. I'm ready to make the uh, motion. 
as presented, as eliminating as condition number right, one. I'll move 6A1 and 2 and add the recommendation that the Glendale City Council uh, get involved in this uh, program <laughs> and attempt to chill out a little bit. <laughs> Maybe we can start with right the private attitude. <laughs> it, may take some, it may take some intensive yoga <laughs> to uh, do that. But Test your skills. Move 6A1. I'll and second that. <laughs> About my other point about the fee in the future, I know uh, there is a uh, talk about that. Some of the staff in the development that, that's not, not in here. That's not in yeah, That's not before us at now, Mr. Iwazian. We oh. we'll have to agendize that issue if and when a fee is instituted, and if and when well, we, we, should we uh, burden your business with that. So thank you. Yeah. Hold on. A roll call, please. Agency members, Raymond. Yes. Montero? Yes. Weaver? Aye. Yusefian? Clarification. The motion is the elimination of yes. part one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Chairman Jaren? Yes. Okay. Motion passes. Uh, item seven, please. Any comments from the agency or the staff? Move to adjourn. Second. Agency is adjourned. <laughs>